Hello everyone, and this is the 33rd uh, episode of the OrcaCast. Today with me, Lord Val Gaming. Hi. Bam Bam. Hello. And we are going to talk about our games of the year, or the best games of 2020. I don't personally like crowning a single game that has succeeded all games. I had a special stipulation today for our uh, Mr. Lord Val. I said... <laughs> Only games that have released this year and no expansion packs. <laughs> so, dear viewer, don't be surprised if you don't see Beyond Light here, because it would be a very boring show otherwise, and I needed to challenge him a little bit, so he uses that beautiful brain of his to come up with some reasonings why he likes the games he likes. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, you're picking on me already. Beyond I'm not game. picking on you. I just like to challenge you. He's someone and to say that. Someone I, to say a good, a good challenge. Like game of the year. <laughs> a good challenge is better than nothing. Who starts? Let's get Bam Bam first. All right, Bam Bam, let's go. You're on the spot. There's at least four games I definitely mention as some of the best I've played this year. Hades, which is a phenomenal roguelike, and it's a. I'd say it's definitely a modern masterpiece. And I think it's going to come down even like years later that it's a still like a phenomenal design game that's that holds up really well, just based on the gameplay, art style, music's amazing. And I spent 80 hours on it this year. And if they put out like an expansion or because they keep updating the game. So if they add new stuff, I'll probably just install it again and play it another like 40, 50 hours. Uh, another one is Resident Evil 3, which is technically a remake, but it's not really. It's pretty much a completely from ground up newly designed game. It wasn't as well received as Resident Evil 2, but for me, it's one of the most tightly designed action games we got in a while. It's the dodging system. It's the gunplay and the to a T polished animations, triggers and everything. It's so much fun to play, especially if you're a speedrunner. That game's so much fun to try to speedrun. Another one is 13 Sentinels, which is a game that Atlas sent out to die. It's a, a strategy RPG a visual novel that's extremely fun with really fun story and characters and gameplay that just keeps you entertained all the way through. And it's one of the few games this year I actually sat down to finish 100%. And speaking of 100, finishing a game 100%, uh, that's another one that's Ghost of Tsushima, which is damn near the best game I've played this year as well. It's, a, it's again, a combination of story. The gameplay is absolutely a joy and even the uh, multiplayer expansion they added pretty much puts every single live service game to shame with how polished and actually fair it is in what it gives you um if there's a game i really wanted to play but didn't get to this year it's probably sakuna sakuna of rice and ruin which is a like a action side-scrolling rpg with town management i still letting it to play it this year but maybe next year and yeah i think that's for me this year, I'm trying to wreck my brain if there's anything else. But really I completely like, agree with you on the Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, it I mean, was an absolute brilliant yeah. game from the get-go, and it was just beautiful. Yeah, Ghost of Tsushima definitely is one of the best games that released this year, and mm. very much I think it's the best way to end the PlayStation 4 as a system, because now it's not getting its own exclusives, but obviously Ghost of Tsushima is the last exclusive we got, and probably I think it's one of the best games to really end that generation. That if there's anything like I didn't like this year, it's definitely Dirt 5. That was an enormous disappointment. I probably would be all right with it if they didn't mm -hmm. call it Dirt, if it was like a spin-off. But this is just not a Dirt game. It's 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 like a it's like a kart racer you'd get on a PSP. It's just not fun. I know. Yeah, it, it, they they gone full on arcade now. Yeah, yeah, and that that's not really. It's like. You had Dirt 3, which was pretty much perfect. All you had to do was just remove all the talking. Yeah. And Dirt 5 it lets you skip the talking, but just the, just the gameplay itself is just, yeah, it's not fun. Full on arcade That's what yeah, I've yeah. seen so far. Pretty much that's that's the, uh, I would say that's the route we actually spoke about on uh, which one was it? The racing game. The Ghost other one that was Project Cast Project 3. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was they went the route of full on arcade, and I think it was a big, big flop. Yeah, same yeah. Thing, I, just, I think the same thing happened to the five, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's coming up. Like the critical reviews were sort of positive, but mm -hmm. every, like when you check like the user reviews anywhere across the consoles and even like on PC, it's mediocre at best. Yeah, and I think since we're not talking expansions, I think that's me for this year. What going well, next? Yeah, I thought it was gonna be. Uh, we were gonna save the best for the last. Okay, so <laughs> the in my, uh, for me, uh, best games of the year. I'm gonna go in like in chronological order throughout the year. Um, one of the games, uh, it's in my opinion, one of the best of the year is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. It was a really good. I grew up with Dragon Ball, so obviously, you know, I keep these kind of games like. I love them because obviously it reminds me to my childhood. So, I mean, Dragon Ball and also, you know, the, the start of the game is kind of like an RPG game. So it's really cool. And you go through the, you know, all the story from Dragon Ball Z, which is basically the best part of the story from the whole story on Dragon Ball. So in my opinion, that's uh, the first one. Second, we have Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Wisps? Did I say that right? Wisps? Ori. It's just, it's Ori. Uh, there is nothing else I have to say about that. It's a platformer which looks absolutely stunning. It plays well. It just it looks good, and it just takes full on advantage of the the One X, not the Series X. It will take advantage of the Series X now. I think it's it's being of that upgrade to the Series X already. Or if it is, if it isn't, it's going to be. 240 FPS, I believe. Something crazy. That's the second one for me. Then another. It, this is probably not the best game of the year for me, but it's it's gonna have a honorable mention, which is Doom Eternal. It's a beautiful game. You know, it's Doom. Uh, brings you back memories from the old Doom. It's actually really cool. The music is fine. The you know the the, the gameplay is really cool as well. So ripping eyeballs off and stuff like that. That's I just like. It. It's just Doom. It's more Doom. So. And it's Doom done well. So it might not be a candidate for me for Game of the Year, but it's it's got to be up there with at least an honorable mention because it's a brilliant game. I want to wanna mention another game, which is actually just one Game of the Year, which is The Last of Us Part 2, I believe. Is that correct? So that is a no-no. I don't think Last of Us 2 is a game, no, no one near close Game of the Year. Maybe an unpopular opinion. I just wanted to say it. I needed to say it. Well, let me, <laughs> let me hook in here. <laughs> this is the first time we all three in this room completely are in agreement. There you go. Yes. <laughs> I made it. I made it. I'm out. See you this later. This is the absolute first. <laughs> I'm out. See ya. All in agreement. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle. I'm done. I'm done. It's, <laughs> it's a, a freaking Christmas miracle of 34th Street. <laughs> 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 all right so <laughs> moving on to the next one is gonna be ghost of tsushima i think this is just the pinnacle of gaming in my opinion this year and probably i, I would dare to say in the last decade after destiny obviously <laughs> so I, I i just ghost of tsushima in my opinion it's just beautiful the setting the gameplay came out perfect almost perfect it's got support it was kind of quiet you know it, it was it, it's nice to see a game that kind of goes quietly and then drops and it's good it's just almost perfect it's from the get-go and that's not something you see very often on gaming lately the thing was i think it's because it comes from another old school developer which is insomniac and they have like playing ghost of tsushima felt like going back a generation in a way that it had that old school polish yeah, where it came out and it just worked. I would say, like, obviously, uh, joking aside, uh, Destiny had issues and stuff like that. Obviously, it's, I love Destiny, but in my opinion, on this decade, it's been Ghost of Tsushima and uh, Monster Hunter World, two games that came out and almost quietly, and they were perfect from the get go. And it, it's just nice to see, you know, these kind of games doing. You know, I give them a lot of praise because, you know, that's something. It's not happening. Guys, we get how many games we get every year? Maybe 1,000 games, 2,000 games, and maybe one or two come out almost perfect on day one, which is an achievement nowadays. And moving on, I'm going to have another mention, which is going to be grounded. It's not fully out yet, but it's, it's still on like alpha version, I believe, or, or beta on Xbox Game Pass. 
Early access. So early access, yeah. It's kind of like an alpha, shall we call it? Like beta, maybe? It's more of an alpha. I think. More of an alpha, yeah. But then Grounded, in my opinion, the concept of Grounded, it's brilliant. What they want to do is absolutely amazing. They're working on it. And I had so much fun out of the game. Obviously, the game has bugs and stuff, which Orko just mentioned is kind of like alpha, it's early access, so it's, they're still working on it, it's not fully fleshed out. But um, I would say Grounded, the, 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 the idea of Grounded is it's really good. It's like, a, you know, one of the movies that probably we've all watched and it's, you know, uh, funny, I strung the kids. The concept is amazing. Uh, uh, another one that goes on to the... <laughs> you guys are going to start hating me now. We're going to, <laughs> in my opinion, that's all in my opinion, unpopular opinion, probably. Um, Marvel Avengers is up there with games of the year for me. It's uh, as and half. It has a problem, which is Endgame. Every single game like that has the same problem. And until you release those games, you don't realize what you're missing. And the gameplay is good. It feels great. You know, it's Marvel Avengers. You get to play with your superheroes. And in my opinion, that's a really cool concept. Another one is going to be Godfall. I just, I am sorry, but I'm in love with the visual of the game and how the game plays. And, and I don't know. I just, I'm in love of how the game plays and the visual. It, it's just, there's nothing I can do about it. And unfortunately, there is no end game as well. Same, exact same issue as Marvel Avengers. But in my opinion, it's got to be up there because I really like the game uh, another one i'm gonna mention is gonna be assassin's creed valhalla which is a good game not the best maybe of the year i would say i have to mention as well uh, i was very very cautious about the game i can say because of ubisoft and somehow they have delivered more than what i was expecting so that's why i'm putting that game up there and last but not least, it's going to be uh, Cyberpunk on PC. Cyberpunk on any other mm, platform is kind of meh. But then if you play Cyberpunk on PC, it's stunning easily. And the game is obviously rich and it's got loads and loads of hours to get into the game. So I have to obviously put Cyberpunk up there, but only the PC version. And that's my list. That's, that's all of them. It's funny that a guy with an Anthem tattoo cho chose games that burn up faster than Anthem actually did. <laughs> <laughs> you mop it. <laughs> He's going for me. He's going for the throat. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Godf uh, Godfall and uh, Marvel Avengers probably lasted even less than Anthem. I'm I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, that's why, that, that's why I wanted to say it. it then, I mean, like, people are not going to agree with me. I, it's just, to me, I appreciate a lot more the intention and I hope they do well in the future and they keep working on them. Obviously, if they abandon the games, I will be really sad. Like with Rion Royale, I'm, I'm really sad that they stopped working on the game because I really enjoyed it. I like the, it's kind of like that's what happened with Marvel Avengers. I feel good about, you know, the, smash stuff and play with superheroes and i feel great it's just a game that i want and it's just it's a grindy game and it's like perfect for me for my for my liking of you know gaming and godfall and i don't know it's the gameplay as, and the visuals i'm sold out on the visuals on that game it's like anthem godfall and anthem are kind of similar in some ways on visuals and movement and stuff it's like kind of i don't know it's just it gets me and i just Fall in love with those kind of games, whether they do well or bad. Well, hopefully their issues get fixed soon and we can get to enjoy them more. I actually believe Anthem is coming on 2021 big, big, without saying anything. They're literally going to drop it. They're going to say, there you go, guys. Anthem 2021, completely free for everyone. If you purchased it, obviously. Go and play because there is a ton of stuff in the game. Let's talk about the next time in 2021 <laughs> like this time of the year in 2021 because... maybe not <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm going to pick this up again no matter what happens <laughs> <laughs>
Re remember that time, well, when you predicted Anthem would come out in 2021? <laughs> and you probably then yeah, said... I, I, you know, did I? <laughs> you said it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my... I had a brain fat completely. <laughs> that, that goldfish brain. <laughs> <laughs> Dory. You can call me Dory. I, I actually think they are really close to finishing. I think they, uh, in my opinion, I think they're going to finish it without release it, without telling anyone because of the mistake they did before. I believe. I believe. Yeah. They have been working on it for like a year already, isn't it? I would say they're close to releasing something kind of like, obviously the base game is already there, so they have to basically rework end everything. game. Yeah. But I mean, the game is made, so that's, they don't have to rework the game. The movement of the characters were perfect, but... Yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's, it yeah, needed we'll some polishing. That's on yeah. other point, but I think there is, yeah, there is way more they have to redo than just than that. It will. I think it will. the, I think even the engine they used were was completely unsuited for what they were going for. Yeah, was it Frostbite? It was the Frostbite engine because yeah. they forced Bioware to use the Frostbite engine, which is not coded for RPGs and stuff like that. And I think it's just hard to work with that engine. When these Star Citizen guys decided to use CryEngine instead of a more modular one. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> that there is right, there's four choices that only can get you so far. <clears throat> so, okay, I have actually a long list of games I really liked this year. Which is kind of surprising looking back on everything. I came up with 10 games that I fondly remember for one reason or another. Mostly for fun, because that what should video games be? Fun. And I start, this is in no particular order or like in, I don't know, goes from best to worst or from worst to best. This is just 10 games I happen to enjoy this year. The first one would be, with no surprise to Bum Bum, Resident Evil 3, which is a absolutely phenomenal release game. And Val's face is like, ah. This is, wow. And you guys speak on me for Godfall? <laughs> Damn. Wow. I, yeah, I would. I, Evil Three is actually a good game. I I, I would just that well, look. I would just say look at the critic score and look at the fan score of both games on the Steam. Oh, we cannot look at the Steam reviews of Godfall, right? But I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> it's no. a remake. It's a remake, and it's so just. It, it is not. A entirely remake, it is actually almost a completely new game. They just retread the story of three and the themes, and it's done well. Only problem this go. game has for a lot of people for some reason is that it's short. Mm -hmm. I personally do not mind short games as long as it is a freaking phenomenal ride, and this game is that. This game is non-stop action. You run from one set piece to the next, which Call of Duty wishes they could make, <laughs> just to get a jab in there. It's just pure joy to play, for me at least. For me, uh -huh. it's a phenomenal game, phenomenal action game, and the higher the difficulty, the better. It's extremely tightly designed. The attacks are super well telegraphed from the enemies. Like Bam Bam said, the animations are on point. The hitboxes are on point. Everything is just perfect. It's just super tightly and well designed. And this is what I want from my action games personally. And I'm the not second lie. game is Wasteland 3, which is a top-down RPG game that has uh, caught my attention this year with uh, the writing and just, just the opening scene again. The opening scene is fantastic. I already talked about this in another podcast and just... You go into this fight, and then the one guy sings, like, this religious or religiously themed song, and you just murder everyone, and the song is about the blood of the lamp, and it's fantastic. Just the, the sheer insanity of it all, just, it, it makes my heart jump. It had fun writing, maybe not the best, but it was fun. It had very engaging gameplay, uh, much more so than... I have to admit so far Baldur's Gate 3, which is still in early access and why it isn't on the list. It is just, for me personally, if you just come comes to sh pure CRPG games, it's probably the best one released this year. I haven't played some of them that are very well received. This one 
personally probably takes the crown. The third one I have is Mortal Shell, which took the Dark Souls formula and made it its own. It added to the formula very well. It didn't just retread it. It just took it, made it its own, and added new layers on it, which were very reasonable, very well designed, and had a lot of nuance to them. It's not for everyone because the game is actually really hard. I like the art design of the game. That's phenomenal. And the entire atmosphere is also great. The storytelling is so it's like Dark Souls more lore based, <coughs> but I still liked it. It, it. It's a lot of fun. Um and the next game I have on my list is Iron Harvest, which is a strategy game actually, a real-time strategy game. It's Basically, Company of Heroes in steampunk Eastern Europe. It's great. It's not quite there yet, so maybe take this with a grain of salt. Overall, the effort is very admirable, and they've done a really good job at the game. I would just say it's one of the best RTS released this year. I mean, I don't know if there are even any other RTS have been released this year, but that's a great one. Next up is one where I'm a little bit surprised Bum Bum didn't mention it. Uh, Ghost Runner. Yeah, I didn't want to mention like 10 games, so I just boiled it down <laughs> to a couple. Like you. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. <laughs> well, because I thought it was like a discussion, so we were going to discuss like each choices, but okay. <laughs> yeah, we can discuss later. I mean... I'm loving okay. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ask for everyone today. We, we, we have like, we yeah. have no clue what we are doing here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's okay. Pretty usual. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going through it a little bit faster. So Ghost Runner was a very high intense action game, which I really liked. It's basically a combination of Mirror's Edge and Hotline Miami. And this comparison doesn't do it any justice whatsoever but it's the easiest to make next up we have paradise killer which is a great game a great adventure game very compelling story a lot of fun for me at least and i've played it actually almost to finish i haven't seen the ending but almost everything about it i personally liked we have immortals phoenix rising uh, which is basically zelda with assassin's creed it's just a good time it's nothing new it's very transparent what they are doing is it bad no i liked it and the next one is murder house that is one horror game done right um, especially when it comes to the soundscape and the cheesy atmosphere of the 80s horror like the uh, tv producer that looks like a porn producer in the end it's fantastic and then i have one last game i will scrap the last one as it already was mentioned by bum bum death end request 2 which i would not recommend anyone playing it because the reasons why I liked it so much is because it was so terrible. It's a game that is so bad, it's good. All right, let's discuss the choices, gentlemen. Let's start Whoa. with Bum Bum. Resident Evil 3. Val looked like he had a lot of lot to say um, about that. It's, it's a remaster. If I mean, if that works, I'll put Beyond Light in there, bro. It's not well, a remaster, is, it's, it's a remake. It's more original than Beyond <laughs> a remake, Light, honestly. Man. Beyond Light is a brand new game, so I'm just gonna say. It's not. Nah, I just, I'm, 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 I'm just, I just didn't really like it. That's all. I mean, you don't it's like horror like games at all. Right. No, it's, just, it's Resident Evil. Doing Resident Evil, which they've been doing it for like how long now? 15 years? And it's more well, of the same. It's well, literally more of the you same. You haven't man. really just... played any of them then. I'm just mm. going to say that now. Okay. I play I play them. I play them in the past, obviously. Not not play them now. Yeah, yeah. Because, because... I just there, there is okay, a point let's, where let's let's let me ask you this now. What certain evil games have you played? One, two, three, and four, I believe. I, I don't know if I played four. I'm not entirely sure. I play them, I play them. I mean I play them, I watch people play them all the time. And it's just and it, it's one of those games that if it keeps repeating the same stuff, I get bored of it. It's like Call of Duty, for example. It just keeps repeating the same stuff. So I I'm done with Call of Duty. I don't play it anymore of that. Like they've released a brand new game and it's like literally the old version of the game reskinned with newer graphics and new weapons. In my opinion, I feel like Resident Evil is just redoing the same thing. They're trying to bring back the old memories from the old games and like you said, you know, it was like so when short. you how <laughs> when how can you, a remake can let, be short? Bro. Okay, let me <laughs> let me let me let me pose another question. So you said you yeah. played one, two, three. I guess on the PlayStation, right? Yes. Okay, then do me one favor. If you look at 
these games and then at the remakes you There's will a huge difference yes night and day night and day that, that i'm not gonna I'm, I'm not i'm not arguing with that yeah but, but you said that... it's the same over and over again which it isn't it's the same because thing. it's the same concept exact same concept no I mean, it, it isn't that's well, it's like every single shooter you can say it's the same concept why even about to make a new one yeah but i mean I'm t we're talking about like racing evil is racing evil all over again same and exact I, same I will scenario, exact same you know no, it isn't. I, I will, and I will tell you why. Because if you just look at the difference between Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 3 Remake, Resident Evil 7 takes place in Louisiana and has a firmly mad family vibe where you go to Texas Chainsaw Massacre and other horror films like that. And Resident Evil 3 is firmly rooted in other atmospheres and takes the inspiration from other horrors. Those are two fundamentally different games. Even well, yeah. with the perspective. It's I completely, the one, I completely agree with you the, and I understand the, the you. The one seven is from a first person perspective and the remake is from a third person perspective. Those are completely fundamentally different games. Yeah. Even the vibes, even like hmm. Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake, you can like these saw them as a remake but essentially it's two completely new games built from the ground up they reuse like the things they reuse is super are superficial to the games themselves like even resident evil 2 it's a uh, resident evil 2 is more of a like a puzzle action horror game mm -hmm. whereas resident evil Th resident evil 3 is a straight up high like high speed action with zombies and the main thing is there is a stalker after you and mm -hmm. that like changes completely the vibe of what it is and how it even like feels to play so those are like yes it's like you can boil it down to so, like extremely minute details that are or like concepts that are shared mm -hmm. but overall each game feels different and that's what makes them like even yeah older games like even on playstation 1 1 2 and 3 each game feels extremely different to play while mm -hmm. they one, share two, like, the three are game, pretty like, similar concepts. in my opinion it's the same as scary stuff, isn't it? It's the same concept of horror, isn't it? When you th when you boil down to, to like boil it, boil it down to that, it's like Resident Evil One, it's mad science. Resident Evil Two, it's the Eve of ap ap Apocalypse. Essentially, mm -hmm. you st step into a zombie apocalypse. So that's two different themes. And then Resident Evil Three, you have a big big chunky stalker after you that can, you know, rush into the room any moment. And that's mm -hmm. a different type of horror. It's like, I don't know, it's like Resident Evil 1 is Frankenstein, Resident Evil 2 is Day of the Dead, Resident Evil 3 is Friday the 13th. Uh, it feels the same to me. It feels like well, the same zombie thing <laughs> concept. It's I mean, zombies the chasing you. On to kill you. <laughs> I mean, you can't expect any less from someone that likes Godfall, so... Yeah. I, I just, honestly, I just feel like, you know, he's... Doing a remake and not even doing it well is... It's a uh, damn good remake. It's a good remake, but it's not even long. It's like you can finish it. It doesn't matter if it's quick. long. It's really well done and it it's fun. Yeah. Like I like the game so much that I've played like 40 hours of it, even if I can finish it in less than an hour. And that's, I, I, that's, a, that's a sign of a good game. Um, yeah. I mean, it's good. I'm, I'm, that's fine. I just... <laughs> to me, to, that that's good for you. I, it's me. It's like not, it's like it's Val. You're trying to argue like game design with me, and that's not a good idea. <laughs> no, no, no. That's fine. I, I I see your point. I completely see your point. I'm not going to argue with you. I completely see your point. I'm I'm and Orcos, and I understand that. It's just to me, it's it's uh, I see it from a different perspective. Per perspective. Yeah, it's like I, it's like I don't want to make it sound wrong, but it's like the normie opinion of the game it's like you you see what the game is just on a surface level yeah of course like most yeah. of the people in my opinion yeah it's, it's what i'm saying it's like a nor it's like a normie viewpoint mm -hmm. of the game yeah yeah i i can i can i got no obviously because i've been playing my entire life obviously yeah i got knowledge of a million different games but on a surface level on 99 percent of them and i like reading about them and i like looking at them yeah, and yeah. i like everything but i don't go deep into details on the games I don't even probably go deep much onto Destiny, if I'm honest with you. I know stuff. I don't know the, the exact percentages and um, if you have this buff and exact damage numbers of this thing or anything like that. You know, I got knowledge. No, yeah, yeah. I don't I go mean, deep into other things. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean it, like, not, that's not exactly where it is. It's exactly where it is, what you said. Yeah, no, I mean, like, not going too deep actually makes it easier <clears throat> to enjoy games, to be honest. Yeah, I, know, I wish yeah. I could do that. But I'm just mm. like S and I'm like that. I just focus on other things. But yeah, it's actually yeah, yeah. Th that's exactly what you said. I do enjoy games, 
because I kind of like go over them and don't try to see the tiny little details and just have fun with them. Yeah. If they're attracted to my eye and play well, that's it. I'm sold. Let let's let's have some fun here. <laughs> <laughs> because um let, let's go to another game uh that's called godfall um you oh can God. you can so <laughs> I, I, the game. <laughs> I i have i have a little story for you Val. so okay, i was okay, browsing okay. a uh site where you can get keys from developers it's called arsenal.gg uh -huh. And I was browsing the site, looking for a key maybe to get to show to my audience. There it was, Godfall. And I was like, okay, um, I don't think I get this big AAA release as the tiny mm -hmm. streamer that I am, because I'm tiny compared to other people. I said, okay, just, just for the giggles, let's apply. You can see how desperate they are that I had the key for the game two hours later. This is how desperate they are to make the game a success. And since I got the key, guess what? I played it. And you enjoyed it? It's a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long shot. I was hoping for you to say another thing. Um, uh, but I, I can leave at least it from... Just, it plays well. It plays well. And, and the setting, I think it's just... Uh, the story is almost non-existent. I think they just kind of like they had issues with the story, unfortunately. I don't know. I think the game looks ugly. I actually like the visual of the game. I think it looks really pretty. Everything, everything, looks everything pretty. is just shiny in this game. It looks like Donald Trump designed it or something. Oh come on, bro. Nah, don't, like, just, don't say like that. Don Donald, think... Donald Trump had the interior design. Like it's... or or a, a, a to 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 get another comparison like a Dubai Shaikh had a little bit too much money and said hey make everything shiny in this game let's make everything golden let's let it shine away <laughs> and it, it's it's almost to an obnoxious degree <laughs> and let's let's just not talk about the combat do you know what I realized so here here is something I I have for it bosses in Godfall uh -huh. have an absurd amount of health. And, yeah, and you can and, redo them uh, if you like. Is yeah. that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Yes, exactly. I don't, I don't think that's a bad concept. I, I think, I think that's it's actually... a horrible concept, and you know why? Because it's, I... it's admitting defeat. Because no. they couldn't make, make their combat work. I actually why? think... I, I, I never seen, I've never seen anything like that in an action game. That you could, like, take away a third of their health and then just redo it. Because, hey... Guess what? Your combat doesn't work, so they had checkpoints for the bosses. I it, honestly, I, I want, I want to tell you this, just, just so you know as well. I want to tell you this. Uh, it, we, I kind of like, I agree with the concept, but I also think that should be an option. You get what I mean? I, I think could be an actual thing, but it should be an option as well. It should be like you have the option of when you die, the boss. Uh, gets back to full health and you restart the whole encounter or you continue from the point that you're wrong. You understand I what I mean? Yeah, so but my, my, my point, my point... A lot of people that might play and they're not as skilled. And for example, even though I might be a skill or not, I actually like the concept because I was like, I, I got to start over. It, it, I've been here for like 10 minutes fighting the guy and I got to start over. That really... That, honestly, I hate. I really hated that from uh, Monster Hunter. That, that is, is uh, something. That well, well, let me say something. This is a mm -hmm. point I can actually agree on, but that wasn't my point. My point was that the combat is so terrible designed mm -hmm. that you cannot beat these bosses by skill, and they know it. That is my point. Yes, you can. Did you do it? Did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> for a few bosses i mean i'm not the most skilled person on those type of games i'm more like it's i, I don't break. doubt you can do it but probably when you have better equip equipment it's easier because it's also a numbers game it's like everything in this game knocks you down every attack it's like completely against the combat flow the animations mm -hmm. are poorly telegraphed so you never know when to dodge or when to block and there is something else that is or 
what what I um, experienced. Input queuing. Or input queuing. Yeah, the input queuing is completely wrong. I've never seen anything like that in an action game like this. It's wrong because it's not there. That's the, that's the issue. Uh, input queuing. What it is essentially, it's like yes, you make an action, but in the middle of the action, you can press another button, and it queues up that action. So when that action you just pressed finishes, it will carry out the action on the button you had pressed before. In the Godfall, that doesn't exist. And it makes the combat not fun. <laughs> they want to be like, yes, they say like, oh, we're going to be a monster hunter, but it plays more like God of War or something like a slower Ninja Gaiden, where it wants to, you to move around and stuff, but mm -hmm. you can't because you're just too sluggish to do anything at a moment, moment's notice. So you just get knocked on, onto your, and then you can't even roll fast off your back because there is no input queuing to let you do that on essentially the first frame you can. So yeah, like there's a lot of stuff like, I, I didn't even have to really play it. I just watched people that mm -hmm. I know are either like, oh, I watched this like Devil May Cry mm -hmm. speedrunner or a Dark Souls speedrunner that probably are going to be good at this. And then it's like, they just slug. Their, their way through the game. That I'm sorry, guys. I'm just, I enjoy the game. That shouldn't take I, I just away like from your enjoyment of the game. No, I think it's and beautiful. And we don't want you to don't enjoy it. We're just bringing up reasons why we don't enjoy it. And that's pretty valid, I think. I just, you know, in my opinion, is the game, it, to me, looks good. The game, to me, is it's a beautiful game. And it just plays well. I mean, I think I'm sold on the graphics and the looks of the game. I like shiny stuff. I mean, if you see my Destiny characters, they're all shiny, all of them. So, <laughs> that's why I am I not I surprised? <laughs> it, it, it's what I do. All my characters are super shiny. You have to, you have to see my my Titan. It's like bright. I, I expect bold. you to use lip gloss from now on. It's a bright. Yeah, I will be using lip gloss if it wasn't <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> because people. <laughs> It's just the, the graphics I'm sold on. I feel like those games, I don't know, I, I kind of like, because I play so much of like games like Destiny, which is a first person shooter. And I don't come from that background. I come from sports games and then having to switch onto a third person, which never I never liked before. And then I started kind of like liking it with maybe Remnant from the Ashes and then Monster Hunter World. And I started feeling good about those games because kind of like Monster Hunter World kind of like feels clunky. It's the style of Monster Hunter, which I completely understand, but it feels clunky. And then Anthem came out and it was, to me, it was perfect. I loved it. I loved it. I loved the concept. I loved the, you know, shooting aliens and, and moving around and third person. And, you know, it was a change from what I'm doing. That's why I play also The Division. And then Godfall came out and it got, it's got the looks of Destiny while you're attacking other people. And it feels like the fighting of like Marvel Avengers as well. And it was like, I really, really, really wanted that game to do well because I was like, it looks beautiful. It's not done well, but I mean, I still think game is is absolutely beautiful and i'm hoping they they fix that all they have done in, in my eyes all they have to fix is uh you know end game and stuff obviously there's other issues which you guys are talking about which are completely i completely understand them and i know where you guys are coming from and everyone agrees with you which is you know obviously i'm not gonna say you cannot you know you guys are not right you guys are wrong but i'm not gonna say that at all obviously i completely understand that but i just kind of see the game and i i just like it i look at the game and i like it i like the looks if i like the looks you kind of i mean you guys have to understand me if you like the, the look of the game you will probably tend to like the game it will you know if it gets you through the eye kind of you're already going to be not not biased but the first thing you see is what is going to say yes or no. I mean, I like anime art style a lot. And if you get yeah. something anime, you, you kind of, if you see something, a game that's coming out, like a anime. Lot, there is a lot of uh, games with anime art style that I despise a lot. Yeah, but at the first, at the cl first glimpse, catch, it catches your eye. I'm isn't always, it? I'm always wary because looks can be very deceiving. Mm. And a whole lot of anime looking games are trash as yeah. well, sadly. See, yeah, but, and uh, request it, too. Yeah, but my, my point is it catches your eye. Because it kind of catches your eye, you, you kind of like want to try at least. But uh, with me, the with the theme with me and the game is just that I, I don't know. I just enjoy the type of fight that there is. And the eye candy to me is spot on. So that's why 
I put it out of the as a game of the year, which I completely understand is a, a complete unpopular opinion. But to me, in my opinion, it, it's gotta be up there. Shall we move on to Marvel Avengers, which is another pretty <laughs> <brilliant> game? <laughs> Let's talk about another trash fire. <laughs> uh, no, go on, go on, go on, go on. No, like uh, when we were talking about you, like in Chinese stuff, like all I imagine is just like three dudes in a military action game all in camo, and then you woke up and it's like, who are you in the golden suit? It's like, hello, I'm Roll Bell Gaming. <laughs> That's completely me. That's absolutely completely me. I, I, I'm, <laughs> you know what you should do? You should probably buy like a like a golden like track suit and stream in that. And, I, I used to have like and, golden boots. You remember and, the Nike boots? And then oh, yeah. and then call yourself Golden Boy Gaming. <laughs> Lord Golden Boy Gaming. Yeah. I would oh, I would absolutely man. support that. I should do that. I had the gold boots when they came out on the Nike ages ago. Like probably about fifteen years I, ago. If you don't do it, I'm gonna buy you a golden tracksuit. <laughs> I definitely would I definitely would. <laughs> I'll de- I'll wear it. And then you have to, and then you have to wear off. it on every stream. I'll definitely wear it. I mean, that's not. Of course, I will. Of, of course, course, I will. You do. <laughs> yeah, definitely, one hundred percent. I'm telling you. Uh, there is another game that I actually want to talk about, and and see your 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 opinion on it, guys. Which is uh, kind of I got the opinion of Orko before the Last of Us, the second part, the game that came out this year. So why Orko don't like? you have the same and bam bam why you guys have the same opinion as me what's the reason behind it well we could start at the terrible writing for starters yeah that's actually not what i what what i heard about the game the terrible attempt at like shoehorning a new character into a story that doesn't deserve it the fact that so i okay let's let's start i mean everyone has played it spoilers joel dies thank me later so, Joel, in, in the first game, we need to establish what character Joel was in the first game. Joel was somebody who deeply cared about Ellie, but he was also an unredeemable bastard. I don't have an issue with him dying in this game. It is just the way it happened. Joel was someone in the first game who was a well-trained soldier, who effortlessly called out ambushes, who effortlessly just was a total badass, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And somehow, between part one and two, he seemingly got dementia and went <laughs> into a room with people who were obviously up to nothing good and ju- just gets beaten to death. This is like one of the worst writing tropes you can choose. Absolutely terrible. And not to speak yeah. of the gameplay, because that's like you play the same thing on repeat for 20 hours. Stuff like forced choices. When uh, Mr. Druckmann said you never have to kill a dog in this game, but you as Ellie are forced to kill a dog, and it turns out later it's the dog of Abby. You cannot... It's forced on you. And then the game tries to make you feel bad about it, what you did. The game doesn't even give you its choice. This is such a manipulative pile of garbage. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, the problem was that even the writing in the first game was just barely passable. What elevates a lot of the story beats is the performances, like Troy Baker, Laura Bailey, Ashley Johnson. They're doing a tremendous job. Like, they're some of the best voice actors in the game. And, like, they may, they, they are the ones that essentially elevate the poor writing. More so in the second game, like the first game is all right. The second game is, I, I'm not sure you would pass as a, as like a Hallmark TV writer. Then the, the gameplay, there's another issue. It's, it's not, there's, it's not that it's just repetitive. The game design feels like it's 10 years behind. This feels like a game that you would play on like late PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3. There is nothing really that puts it above what like a game should be or like it doesn't try anything new and as you said like the, the forced moral choices which are not moral choices you're like you're supposed to feel bad 
and then the game is like, oh, and now like go kill like 30 people. They try to make make it in game, put it into context where they like the other NPCs would yell the names of the like or the quote unquote names of the characters you killed. And it doesn't really resonate because it's not like they were just if they find you, they will let you go. They will kill you. So it's like it's like either I'm gonna kill them or they're gonna kill me. There's like there is no other. You're not giving me any other choice. So why should I feel bad about it? And yeah, and and I think just the uh, debacle with the DMCA's before the game was even released that didn't help either. And then critics and the developer themselves dismissing the opinions from the community that just look was the cherry on top even if you didn't care about that the game itself is average with some really good voice acting basically that's it it's overblown it's overhyped and i know that last of us 2 sold way below expectations there is evidence or circumstantial evidence for that because if you look at the stores in my city that thinks it's firmly on the shelves, like stones or something. And this is also why Sony, in quotations in Neil Druckmann, wanted this thing to be Game of the Year from the Game Awards. I don't think it was a Game of the Year at all. There's a lot of games who were a lot better. And kind of was like a train wreck. And I, I wouldn't even go so far and say that... Man- <laughs> and, and how did you- they manage to be Game of the Year? I, I just don't understand that. Well, well, I, I'm I'm gonna give you something right now. I'm gonna give you something right now. I would go so far since I have played it, and despite me not liking it, I would say that Godfall even has more redeeming qualities than Last of Us Two has. <laughs> yes, yes, my praise have been heard. <laughs> yes, you said something nice about Godfall. Yes, <laughs> where's no. real or go? <laughs> I, no, I I have I have a seething th- hate boner for Last of Us Two. Hmm. That's why I never touch on that subject. I don't say the game shouldn't exist. I would never say that. And please believe me, Dad. And if you enjoyed the game, go. I don't care. Do whatever. For me personally, this game shows what is fundamentally wrong. Or some things that are fundamental fundamentally wrong in the video game industry at the moment. Mm-hmm. It is uh, an mm-hmm. auteur aspiring to do much greater things with their video games than they can. It is a vanity project of a guy who thinks he's great but really isn't. It is basically a mediocre mediocre game in every aspect that is passed on by the gaming press as the next big thing. There is such a myriad of problems with this title. No, let, let's not discuss it. I mean, you two can still discuss it, but I, I'll just keep quiet now. Last, I would like to know your opinions from me on the last game that we actually just got released, which is uh, Cyberpunk 2077. If you guys have played it. I have played it. I would like to wait until they finish it, actually. But it's not yeah. finished yet, in your yeah. opinion. Here, gonna... he, here's, here's the thing, and this is what I think. And uh, I probably might catch a lot of flack for this, but I don't care. CDPR should have never, ever, 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 ever considered a console release for this game. And here is why. Because it feels gutted. It feels like a lot of content is still missing. I think it is in part because they were focusing also on the last gen consoles. Never mind that that was an absolute disaster of a launch. Mm-hmm. But I also think they got it out a lot of features they wanted to make for the game just so the consoles could handle it at all. What they have should be doing and this is this is I, I have this or set on stream already as well. There is there is I, I track like three or four mistakes they made. First mistake is announcing this game like eight years ago. Never mm-hmm. do that. Announce I mean, it yeah. maybe two years before release and then say and they should have delayed it until twenty or not delayed, but they should have said from the get go, our release will be twenty one. PC only and once we are done with the PC version, you get a console version for the next-gen consoles. Bam Bam also pointed out, because we had the discussion... Uh, make a point yourself, Bam Bam. 
No, no, go ahead. You you said that probably also during the development time when they first started with the game that it looked still feasible on when they were current gen consoles, so PlayStation 4 and Xbox X or Xbox One, not X, sorry. They they probably still thought those consoles were feasible, but that changed during development. If you have an eight-year development cycle, a lot changes. Yeah, especially the tech, like tech evolves at such a speed that during the eight years of development, like we had what three different generations of GPUs, two two new types of like two new generations of CPUs, and essentially we went from like four gigs of graphical uh, memory to up to eight or twelve. Now it's such a leap in technology over the eight years that probably they. Yes, it was feasible on, say, like the old version of Cyberpunk, the one that would maybe release it like four years into the development. But given it's been eight years now, the tech changed so much that at that point, they probably should have just realized, yeah, the PS4 version and the Xbox One versions are not going to be great. Maybe we should scrap that just because they announced it so long ago and they had pre-orders going like for the last four to five years they just couldn't because there was such a volume of pre-orders that it would have been essentially like a business like the suicide for their business so they're like yeah might as well just you know it runs which is surprising they just shipped it out honestly myself is like i do game on pc a lot so i'm gonna probably get it at some point on pc but i'll just give it like a year or two just to wait and see how the game goes if i even want to bother it, then it happens kind of like easily happens with those triple a games that easily come out within the, the transition of the new generation of consoles and and the previous generation of consoles like loads and loads of games like a struggle with that stuff but they, they it is sad excusable. because these people you think about these people have been working on this for eight years and they have delayed the game how many times four five times was it five mm. times or six times yeah i think a couple of times i think they delayed it once at least last year and then this year it was like twice it created expectation uh they had the issue with the new generation and the old generation of consoles and then the yeah. game plays well on on pc i think it's just it's an excellent like that's why i said you know it's a the pc version only i think the game runs excellent yeah. but it's just i don't know it, it, sadly sadly it just got the consoles half issues left right and center graphics don't look as good as they should the previous generation of consoles just let's not talk about it because <laughs> that is an absolute mess the, the 12 frames per second nightmare <laughs> uh, uh playstation store actually took it out the yeah they took uh, it out the playstation yeah, store, the no, PlayStation it store. Yeah, yeah i i hope they do it with other terrible games as well i mean sony probably doesn't do it but yeah i also now now realized why they basically took it off the store because uh cdpr just said guys if you want a refund go to sony they give you one and sony basically says in their refund policy as soon as you download it again there will be no refund which is kind of crap it was the reason why they took it off the store uh, i think it's a not very intelligent reason they've probably felt blindsided by cdpr i chalked oh, yeah. this up that statement just up to stupidity on the part of cdpr uh, not knowing that they might that there might be other refund policies for different platforms i don't think that statement was made maliciously or to blindside Sony. If if Sony takes it off the store, I hope they follow suit with the other terrible games that are on their store. Like the, going back to Cyberpunk, I think what they should have done was what they did with uh, Witcher 3, which is finish off the PC version first and then port the game. Yeah, that would be like probably the smartest thing to do. Yes, they would probably have to ax the last gen, like PS4 and Xbox One versions, but at the same time, they would have less bad pr than they do now it wouldn't they wouldn't take as such a big a hit as they did on their like finances just now like they essentially went from almost 20 million down to 13 million just based off after refunds it, it's a shame it does happen with those kind of like games easily i think that's the most high profile release in that regard i think i've never seen anything like that that a game had like 7 million refunds just yeah. imagine that graphics have gone up massively isn't it the new generation of consoles is so different it's closer to a pc a lot closer than the previous generation and like you said it 
this game has been in development for eight years already. Eight, the whopping eight years. Okay. Like we had so many improvements on quality, like graphics on on graphics yeah. cards and and motherboards and CPUs and RAM. And we went for we went through three generations of NVIDIA gra gra GPUs. We went through. 10, 20, and now we're at 30 yeah. over the course of the game's development. I mean, that happens all the time with like these kind of like ambitious games. They last about five, six, six years in development, but the, the, it's the console version. I mean, the PC version is actually fine, though. The console version is just, it's just not, not, not I, right. Because I, I wouldn't call the PC version fine. It still has massive issues. Like the driving AI is basically non-existent. The enemy AI is basically non-existent. There's mm -hmm. a lot of issues they need to fix. Contrary to a lot of stuff, is there is a brilliant game under all that pile of garbage that lies upon it. Absolutely brilliant game. But the myriad of issues and the Rocky, or Rocky Start, Rocky Start is an understatement, just buries it. And you know what I'm so sad about? I love cyberpunk as a genre it's like my favorite thing in science fiction and this game breathes and oozes cyberpunk and i'm not talking about the rpg they based it off i just talk about the concept of cyberpunk in general mm. it is such a well looking game and i don't mean the graphics i mean the art design the entire atmosphere it's such this this is what i what I've been waiting for for years. It is such a shame that it had come to this. It's been so long, and th those guys have been working on it so so long. It really is a bit of a shame, to be honest. Yeah, I think I think with Cyberpunk they probably chewed off more they, than they could handle. I, 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 I honestly think that they, uh, what screwed them over was the they were trying to do the console version, yeah, and yeah. the console yeah, version yeah. like that's, that's fell behind, in my opinion. It just fell behind. Because even then, like when you, despite all the technical issues, when you look even on the PC version, the city, yes, it's filled with NPCs, but the NPCs have zero routines. Essentially, like there is no life to the city. It's all like just surface level. It, 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 yeah, like I said, you know, it feels like they have spent so much time on to trying to adapt the console version, the new generation of the consoles. Because obviously they didn't get the tech of the new generation of consoles until they got the yeah, two years ago. You know what I mean? Like if you spend so much time, you know, if you're spending so much time on to on to doing that kind of stuff, you forget about what can you do on the other thing. The problem, uh, another problem that happens actually uh, is just something that just I've just read about this morning, which is funnily enough, we're gonna bring back Destiny into the conversation. <laughs> The thing is, you know, when uh, Destiny, Luke Smith, which is the game director of Destiny, uh, he said they were going to get rid of a lot of things. They were going to get rid of planets, they were going to get rid of strikes and, and raids and, and, and maps. Because at one point, this is, he actually mentioned that at one point, there is so many things going on. That all you're doing, all you're spending your time is, is on fixing stuff. You're fixing and fixing and fixing and fixing. And you don't use that time to develop something new. You understand what I mean? Exactly. And that, that, and I think that might be the reason that having with that might be the reason with Cyberpunk why they're having issues with. They have spent so much time on to probably adapting the game to the previous generation of console, adapting the game to the new generation of console, and then they don't. They could have used that time to fully flesh out the PC version and then start working on the console version. That is exactly. Like I said in the beginning, they should have never done a console version in the first place. First, like yeah. like Bum Bum said, like they did with Witcher, finish the PC version first, then go for the consoles. Everything mm -hmm. else, please do not do. Please yeah. do not ever do again PDPR. If you ever listen to this, do not do it again. Especially because they're not, yes, they are like a big time developer, but they're not the size of, say, like Ubisoft, EA. Yeah. Activision, they don't have that volume of manpower to do that kind of project and also port it at the same time. They had a bit of more than they could do, but yeah. it's too late. The yep. damage is done. We'll it's see done. how it evolves over the next year. I would actually, just because everything that happened around it and how it everything was, I would say it's the best worst game released this year. Not the not the kind of it's so bad it's good kind of game like Death and Request 2. Just it's a game that has 
huge amount of potential and that potential is just buried under a lot of stuff yeah i think cyberpunk's gonna be maybe good after a year or two of patches oh this is the gaming this is the gaming uh, and this is this is the, the this is what we get on on gaming nowadays isn't it unfortunately i i think a lot a lot i mean the developers are to blame or not the developers but the company yeah. is to blame as well but i also think a lot of blame lies with the gamers for getting hyped up for this or getting to this kind of hype level cyberpunk was experiencing i mean the delay kind of like made it a lot bigger cyberpunk was up there and then the delays you know gave him even more exposure and then kind I, of i mean i think I, I wasn't really all that hyped for it, so my disappointment is actually not that big. I'm more disappointed in CDPR as a company because they always touted themselves as very consumer friendly and they also acted very consumer friendly. But this, what they did here, is everything but consumer friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not so much disappointed in the game as in CDPR as a company. I mean, they, they were the ones. When it's ready, it's out. It's out when it's ready. That's not even true anymore either, because Cyberpunk definitely wasn't ready for a release. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I will just wait until like June, July next year and then possibly play it. Yeah. And hopefully with a lot of patches. And hopefully then it runs well. And for everyone who bought it on last gen consoles, I'm really sorry for you. I really am. And I hope you get your refund and I hope you can buy a good game that runs on your console, like Ghost of Tsushima, or even The Last of Us Part 2, because that thing at least runs. Yeah, it runs. It runs. Yeah. I think it runs even 60, does it? No. No, 30, 30. You never told us what you don't like about Last of Us Part 2. I, I, I did. I did. It's the story was, a, they dropped the ball. I, 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 like I said, you know, I agree with you on the story. I think it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't as good and it wasn't as relevant as probably the first one. The first one was kind of like good. It was the novelty and now they created the new one, the, the, the new story and it wasn't, you know, that enticing to me. It usually happens with the second part, isn't it? The second part of movies and stuff. So they usually kind of like drop the ball because they need to do something new. And, and, and to me, it's just graphics are non-existent. It feels and looks exactly the same as the previous one, don't you think? It, it, it looked kind of the same, yeah. I think they even used the same engine, just a little bit uh, pumped up. So oh, yeah. not much changed. In terms of story writing, I don't think that you always have to do something new in terms of story, especially in a sequel. Please just make a good progression in the story. I would have even... Mm. The confrontation between mm. Ellie and Joel was basically set that they even could fight against each other. I would have rather seen that than what we got here. There could have good themes and, and good stuff in there, but like like we already said, they just opted to shoehorn in a new character that had no business there whatsoever. And that's that's the true shame. Can we make the Christmas miracle once again and agree with one game of the year between us? I can agree to go to Sushim. I've not played it, but I give you that. It's, it's Christmas. Another Christmas miracle. If Bam Bang agrees? Yeah, like I can... I guess I agree on that. Like, there are games I'd rather put. There are like two other games I think I'd put rather. Mm -hmm. But like, I guess like overall, yeah, I guess Ghost of Tsushima could be game of the year. Like, the, like when it comes to story, like if I'd say like, okay, best story, I would say like Thirteen Sentinels is the best story I have played this year. Then like if it was like pure gameplay, Hades is like very much dwarfs everything I've played this year. But like as an overall package, like I loved Ghost of Tsushima and I still play like the multiplayer with my brother. Um, yeah, like yeah, we can say Ghost of Tsushima is Ghost of the game of the year. Yeah, there you go. It's a Christmas miracle once again. It's I uh, disclaimer: I have not played it. I just do it so Val has his Christmas miracle. <laughs> <laughs> like Ghost of Tsushima is a game that essentially. Came out of nowhere because, uh, especially Sony was like so focused on marketing uh, the That's Last of Us Part Two. Yeah. So it's like we got a couple of trailers like spaced out over I think two or three years, and then it just dropped without much, much um, uh, fanfare. And I was honestly because I liked I like as much as I liked Ragon, the Last of Us, uh, the first one. 
I was like, eh, hey, maybe I could get Lost Wars Part 2. But then, like, the whole shebang with uh, the DMCAs and the story leagues happened. I was like, yeah, maybe not. And I was just like, on on a whim, I pre-ordered, or like two days before release, I ordered uh, Ghost of Tsushima and ended up absolutely adoring the game. It's a it's a game that pretty much like carried me through the summer. I think I hundred percented it and I played it again just recently. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's definitely um, like among yeah. the best this year. No, I'm just looking at my list and I want to. Want to ask one last question and then wrap it up. What is the game that I mean, Val and Bam Bam already said like Ghost of Tsushima came kind of out of nowhere for them, but what is actually the biggest surprise for you in gaming this year? Which game surprised you the most? It can be negative. It can be positive. Mm, positively, definitely Thirteen Sentinels because I didn't know anything before that. All I saw was the Vanilla Bear logo. I was like, yeah, might be good. And ended up absolutely loving it. And that game also like took over my life for about four weeks straight. Okay. Um, me, if you ask me, it's, it's again Ghost of Tsushima. I just, I don't know. I was so pleasantly surprised with how good the game came out. Because that's the one thing I praised the most out of that game. Is how, how good it is. Like, it's just good. It's a good game, and it's just made from literally scratch, like literally, uh, and nothing, everything worked fine, mechanics worked fine, the story was fine, uh, they worked on it, they released kind of like a quote-unquote re- raid kind of like activity. I I don't know which game I would give that honor to, actually. What surprised me the most this year? I mean, I, I actually knew Puppet Combo before that, but I think I'm going to give it to Murder House just because of how excellent it turned it out turned out in the end. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have such a big love letter to Clark Tower and Resident Evil, and it just works in everything it does. Yeah, I think the biggest surprise, yeah, like Murder House was a definitely a surprise as well because I've played a couple. I've played like a Silver Staircase, uh, Nine Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the Babysitter, that Babysitter one as well, just blanking out on the name. And like their games always used to be like super short, super simple. There's not much going on. And Murder House is probably the first one I've played from uh, Puppet Combo that felt like a, like a full fledged a game that you, you would like get either like if you want to take it back as a PS1. Or even now as a retro title. It's the first one that feels straight up like a full-fledged game with everything that makes a game feel complete. It's not just a, essentially a concept. I, I think a lot of uh, tinkering with their earlier games has just led, led up to this game, actually. And the soundtrack is just phenomenal. The soundtrack is absolutely, whoa, it blew me away. I've you know ne- what soundtrack is good? The soundtrack. The, so he, here's the thing. Um, I'm a sucker for good horror soundtracks. And especially if a game uh, works with soundscapes to make a game really creepy, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think Murder House excels at that. Murder House is just absolutely fantastic. And the soundtrack as well. And it is probably the one game I'd put up there with Alien Isolations in terms of sound design. The sound design is just amazingly good. It reminded me a bit of the the soundscape of uh, Silent Hill 2 and 3, where they do a lot with the background designs and blending in the music, and also how they use anime sounds. So yeah, I think it feels, it's, a, it's just like a true love letter to the genre. It's it's so if you like, well, what we're saying here is if you like PS One horror games like Resident Evil, Clock Tower, uh, okay, Clock Tower is Super Nintendo, but and want like a combination of those three Silent Hill, Clock Tower, and Resident Evil, play Murder House. It has the stalker type uh, guy that comes after you. It has like 
some Resident Evil vibes when it comes to saving and how you progress through the house. And it has the sound design of Silent Hill and it is an absolutely fantastic game. And it is probably the biggest surprise for me in 2020 and I'm in mad love with it. Puppet Combo, if you ever hear this, please let me interview you. Please! <laughs> Murder House is not for you, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. Yeah, that's it. I, I think we can wrap it up here. Um, mm -hmm. It was a joy, as always. Uh, Lord Val, where can we find you? Well, you can find me on Twitch uh, and YouTube, Lord Val Gaming. Uh, also on TikTok and Instagram, same name, Lord Val Gaming. And on Twitter, Lord Val Twitch. And if you're looking for copyright free music for your streams, for your YouTube, or for anything that matter, uh, you can find on Spotify, you can find it on Apple Music. Just search Lord Val Gaming and you will find it. You can find me on twitch.tv slash theorcosaurus. You can find me on twitter.com slash theorcosaurus, Instagram, orcosaurus, and everything else. YouTube, just orcosaurus. Um, and I stream on Monday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. And I hope to see you there. And Bam Bam, where can we find you? I'm occasionally in Oracle's chat, and that's about it. Yeah, being a sassy little bitch. As usual. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Uh, we wrap it up here. You all have a good one. See you in the new year. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy new year, everyone. Happy new year.